happy to share a dice with uh, General Saab. Of course, uh, we've known each other for a long time, since 91, I think we were in the parliament together. <clears throat> well, sir, I must compliment that uh, the Indian voter. Since 1952 to 2012, we have seen the maturity of the Indian voter. But for some elections, by and large, the Indian voter has proved most of the cephalogists and the political pundits wrong. Now, what does a voter want? Well, like every individual, he wants everything for himself. And why not? The only thing is that over the years, we have been promising a lot but not delivering enough. That has put the credibility of the politicians at one of the lowest ebb. And that is why we have seen the emergence of the so-called civil society and the protectors of the, of the Indian nation. But the fact remains, for any politician to be a legislator or a parliamentarian or a minister or a chief minister is not easy. Every five years, we have to prove ourselves, whether in the legislature or in the parliament. Roughly the size of the legislature, it differs from state to state. For example, in Uttarakhand, I think the average voter size would, in an assembly would be 40, 50,000, general sir? About 40 to 50,000? As every assembly? Yeah, about maximum about a lakh. About a lakh. And in a larger state, it would be roughly between 200,000 to 300,000. In parliament, the roughly the, elect, uh, the voter size would be, say, about 1.2 to 1.5 million. Now, how to keep 1.2, 1.5 million people happy? Or 100,000 people or 300,000 people happy is not easy. There are constituencies, for example, General Saab's constituency, where you can't go by road, you have to go on foot. In, uh, in my parliament segment also, when I was a member of parliament, I had a 300 kilometer long constituency with 80 kilometers wide, with more than <clears throat> about 700 villages to look after. It's not easy. Even if you do a village each uh, um, in five years, it's not an easy task. So therefore, we have to not only keep the life contact with the people. One thing I've seen, you may not do anything, but don't miss a marriage and don't miss uh, some uh, kind of a loss in the family and funeral, and you are through because people are not looking at what you deliver. For example, <coughs> when uh, Mr. Rosaya ji was telling me, was our governor now, ex-chief minister on the Pradesh, <coughs> Mr. Venkatraman, he sort of uh, related this story to him, that once in my first election, I, they asked for a school, I gave them school. Next election, they asked for hospitals, we gave them hospital. After all this thing has been completed, after fifth, fourth or fifth election, he lost the election. So he went back to the voters and asked, why did you defeat? They said, we had enough of you, therefore we have chosen someone else. The point I'm trying to make is that even in spite of you do everything, there's something called the voters' fatigue. If they keep on seeing the same face over and over again, they vote for a change no matter what you have done for them. I'll give you one example. In my constituency, I do happen to look after my constituents fairly well. And I've, they have been good to me also. So in one village, uh, one of my constituents had a hard bypass, which of course I helped him out. Now, when I was contesting, I suddenly found that a village of about 400, 500 voters. All other houses had a Congress flag, 
and this person who obliged with a heart bypass had a BJP flag. So I think that sums up my, this thing. In spite of the best effort, the politician can't do enough. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Akbar, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Digvijay Ji. You just heard Digvijay Ji's experience and what the voters want. He's got much more experience than I have in politics. He said started 52. I started very late in 91 after retirement from the army. Third I was born in 47. I first no, got I elected in 77. Achha, I thought you in politics no, from 47. No, I, no, that oh. was the history, of course. Achha. Achha. Anyway, I anyway, first anyway, got elected in 1977. Achha. So my experience, ladies and gentlemen, I think I am uh, Johnny come late in politics, and therefore uh, I may have different type of experiences. Having a service background, then come to, into politics after I retired from the army. People often ask me, uh, probably I look a little young, used to look younger 21 years back. And they often ask me, did, you, did the army leave you or did you resign? Or did you retire? I told them that army didn't leave me. I didn't leave the army. Army left me because I was to retire after completion of my novel age. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my constituency, when I started in 91, is in Hills of Uttarakhand. And uh, population being sparse, I had uh, three districts in the hills, full three districts, and uh, part of Dehradun. And uh, I mean, hills, even Uttarakhand those days, roads were very few, communication very difficult, going to meet the voters, find out what they exactly want is almost impossible. And uh, therefore, initially, my experience with voters was uh, along the roads, a few villages which are near the roads where I could walk because vehicles couldn't reach there. And after a little while, I realized that I was meeting very few people. And uh, it would be difficult to find out what exactly they wanted. Of course, one could uh, judge and imagine the roads requirement, health problem requirement, education requirement, which is normally in hills, which are underdeveloped. But just for interest, once I started my touring the three districts, and uh, I worked out that one trip along the road only, not going into the villages at all, just sticking to the roads, took me, ladies and gentlemen, 42 days. Just meeting people on the roadside, which is not even to be probably 15, 20 percent of the total population. This is the type of scenario which uh, existed and probably exists in many places. Even now in Uttarakhand, we have some more roads, thanks to Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yojana. But even that uh, aspect of knowing what exactly voters want is very difficult. As I said, I have experience only from 91. Over the period of time, I also realized that the demands keep on changing. The perceptions vary. As one demand gets met, people they obviously want other demands. In case of Uttarakhand, there are many problems. There are problems of environmental conditions, sanctions. Roads cannot be constructed because many trees have to be cut. So there are many problems which uh, the villagers or the voters want, but they cannot be done. And it's not necessarily because uh, the person who is representing them, either in the Vidhan Sabha or in the Lok Sabha, is uh, totally responsible. So when you talk of what does the voter want, I think, at least I can say for Uttarakhand, the voter wanted, I'm using the word wanted deliberately, wanted uh, normal facilities of life, which people had other parts of the country, road communication, electricity, water supply, proper schools, health facilities, education facilities, which uh, were very difficult, very rare, and not at all satisfactory. But over a period of time, as things passed, some things improvement here and there. 
and I am sorry to say this, but I have, I must say this. As the politics got more and more complicated, and I may use the word more and more dirty, the demand also changed, not necessarily towards the developmental activities. And we politicians are also to blame for that. Because at the time of election, we make many promises, knowing very well they will not get done. But if you don't make those, those promises, then you don't get votes. And as Mr. Rakhbar says, those people who don't make uh, too many promises, they normally lose. The change in voters' perception and this demand also taken a qualitative change, and I think it is for worse, it's not for better. And therefore today, and I think a large part of blame is to, it comes to the politicians, because the trend has come that even if you don't do it, you can't do anything, you know it is not possible to do, but what is the harm in making a, a promise? What is the harm in saying that you can do this thing? I have very often been asked by people in my constituency and other politicians, what by meaning, friends, that you can't do a thing, why should you say no? And then I tell them, if I know it is not possible to do, why should I say I can do, I can try, I know it cannot be done. And in politics, there is a very good uh, saying, Guru nahi jete to Guru jaisi baat to karo. If you can't give them sweet, I talk sweetly. So this is the type of qualitative change which uh, has taken place, which in my experience, and the experience is not very long, it's just about 20 odd years. So it has become a very difficult task for a well-meaning representative of people, whether they will, whether the village they will, or the looks of a level, to try and do things for the voters, what he really wants, because they are not necessarily connected with the developmental activities not necessarily connected with the welfare activities. A time has come, it is more and more, uh, the expectations are going towards individual, personal oriented uh, demands. And therefore, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, a situation where we have to start thinking what is wrong with our system. Why should a voter want to be told want to be assured of things which he does not know, which he knows cannot be done. But all along it is happening. Somebody promises a radio, so somebody promises a gold chain, or somebody promises something. Some people can give, some people can't give. So when we talk of uh, what, what does the voter expect, what does the voter want, I think uh, a probably more appropriate question would, would be, what does the politician want from a voter? And then if you put the two together, then maybe we'll come to some solution. How should our electoral system, how should the governance be done? How should, what are the elements, what are the problems with the present system of governance? The many elements. In the present system of government, we talk of uh, democracy in India, the biggest democracy in the world. That system we have followed for uh, electing our representatives, right from village level to the Lok Sabha level. Does that need any change? Is it required to be modified? Is it required to be uh, tinkered with for some better way of uh, achieving these aims? Basic aim of voter is to have proper facilities, proper facilities in respect to everything, whether it's education or health or communication. These are the issues which we have to examine. <coughs> I do not know whether this is the forum for having a longer discussion, but we should examine whether the present system of our election is uh, really suiting our type of uh, nature, our type of thinking, whether it's in the plains or in the hills, whether it is the best system where the first coming, coming past the post gets, whether people like him or don't like him, but because he's got the maximum vote, so he gets, it, gets elected whether we have some other system which would probably suit us better. The low and percentage of voting at many places is a problem in hills. The people find it very difficult to go up to the polling booths. They, not that they don't want to vote, but it takes four, five hours walking into the, to, uh, through the hills, climbing and then coming down. 
whether we have subsystem, or now we have in Uttarakhand or smaller states, the problem of forming a government, whether small legislature is suitable particularly to the small states, Goa, Jharkhand, Uttarakhand, whether one or two people would make the difference of this party or that party forming the government, whether we should have a presidential form of government, whether we should have a, rep a proportional representation for the parties and accordingly form the government, whether this uh, system of having election every now and then it should be done away with this kind of method of having a fixed term of, term of five years, whether all these elections, every day elections are taking place in some state or other, from center to the state to the villages, and whatever the voter may want, that cannot be done because there are all the time there is a co election code, conduct of election code and things cannot be done. In my tenure, when I became chief in 2007, between the uh, time I took over and till Lok Sabha elections, apart from Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha elections, in a matter of about two years, there were 360 days of code of conduct for elections where nothing could be done. Not only developmental activity cannot be done, but starting from sanction the works, then release of funds, then the issue of tenders, accepting the tenders, nothing can be done. So can we have a system whereby we can time these things that they take place at least in states and uh, in the same time? Now Uttarakhand has just finished its elections. Three months or four months have gone because of various pro activities. And from now till 2014, when the election takes place for the Lok Sabha, Continuously, we have elections, state elections. They spread all over time. I said, in this period, in 2007 to 2009, we had, in about two years' time, 316 days of election at various times, not at one time. It is in stages. Today, election code is for seven days. Then you work for 10 days. Then again, the election code was seven days. So this sort of a incongruity in our system is ultimately affecting what the voter wants and what the representative cannot, the favorite representative cannot give, not necessarily because they are fought, but because of the constraints of the system that exists in our, in our country. And therefore, this forum, I would suggest, request that we must carry out some serious study with respect to the type of uh, system we are following for electing our representatives, the tenure system, the timings of the elections that are taking place. Now, even the center does not take uh, some decision. You want to do something, increase some fare? or you want to raise the price of petrol, which is necessary economically, financially is required, but somewhere elections are taking place in the, in the country, and therefore it does not get done. There are such things, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which I put across to you, and suggest that what the voter wants is, is, uh, has to be attended to by their representative, but also the political thinking, the maturity must come, the sincerity of purpose must come, and this uh, tendency of winning votes by uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, I was given 15 minutes, I have run out of time. And at the end, I think only say that uh, uh, we should look into this and then also <clears throat> uh, somehow get out of this habit of, of making our voters opium addict and then as an MD give them some lollipops, they give us something for a short while, it is neither good for him nor for the nation. Thank you very much.